Facebook. So hello, everybody that's watching on the Craig Wiggins Coaching Facebook page. Just as an FYI, let me make sure that this is muted and not coming through. Okay, good. Just as an FYI, y'all, if you're watching this on Facebook, we will not be watching for your comments. We're streaming this via Zoom. So we've got several hundred people that are joined us uh, on the Zoom live. I'll be moderating the questions and stuff there, but we will definitely look at all of your comments and questions that you post on the Facebook video as well that we're streaming live. But real quick introductions. My name, everybody, is Joseph Puckett. I'm the co-founder of Craig Wiggins Coaching. And I'm super excited to have our very special friend, Andrew from Smart Financial here today. For years, Andrew provided and his team provided high quality, high intense leads for Craig Wiggins agencies that I managed for over a decade. And now we continue our relationship as partners. Uh, Smart Financial provides leads to dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of the 1500 member agencies that are involved in Craig Wiggins coaching. And by the way, quick plug for CWC, because today is all about Smart Financial. If you're not a member of Craig Wiggins Coaching and you're interested at all in checking out what we do to help you and your team in terms of our training online, our weekly live training, the 100 documents and scripts, et cetera, check us out at craigwigginscoaching.com. Use my promo code for a nice little discount. But thank you all for joining us live. And thank you to Andrew for giving us your time and your talent today to talk about all things internet leads and objections. My man, take it away. Awesome. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen if you don't mind. Thank you so much for that introduction. We absolutely love being a part of the Craig Wiggins family and community and everything that you guys are doing for agents is so admirable. And, you know, I do want to do a quick plug too. When we have agents that are using the Craig Wiggins service in tandem with our lead service, we see astronomical results when it comes to best practices, when it comes to aggressiveness when working with leads. So Guys, there's a lot of value here with both parties, so I want to get the ball rolling. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is common objections, because, guys, this is this is something that should be inherent and, and a part of your guys' workflow every single day, but sometimes... And we see it with our current clients. Sometimes we drop the ball or we, or we forget uh, about the objections or the rebuttals that we can use. And, and we just want to make it clear that the difference between the weak and the strong producers on our platform are the ones that use objections. I'm sorry, use rebuttals every single time they come up with an objection. Objections are not designed to be overcome every single time. Rebuttals are not gonna work every single time, guys. It may work one out of 10 times or one out of 20 times even, but it's really important to use them every single one of those 20 times because that one time that it works is very much worth it. So use the energy, use your breath, even if it's 4.45 at the end of the day, you're almost, you know, almost done and checking out, you come up with an objection, use your rebuttals, right? That I cannot express enough that the people that are energetic, the people that use them every time they're presented with them are the ones that are successful on our platform. So let's, let's get started. And while, while we do, I want to make it clear that everyone that attended this webinar is going to be able to get $100 in lead credit from Smart Financial, whether you're a current client or, an, or, or a brand new prospect. So that's something that's available for our, all of you guys just for attending the webinar. Now let's go ahead and get started on these initial objections that we see with our current clients. And all of this, this uh, verbiage and data that we've consolidated is based on our current client successes, our own agency successes and research on Lead Response Management Lab, uh, hbr.org, all of that kind of stuff is, is how we consolidated this information. This first one, never requested a quote, not interested. If you guys are purchasing a lead, sometimes you expect to never hear this if you purchase a lead where, of course, the lead service was able to vet that and make sure it was high intent, but it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen, so you got to be prepared to overcome that objection. And the best way to do it is to agree with the consumer. Listen, you're, you don't have anything to be interested in, Joe. <laughs> you don't know anything about this yet. But like me and everyone else, I do know that you have to be interested in, you know, maybe it's saving money on your current coverage, or maybe it's increasing your coverage while keeping your spend the same. And that's why I'm calling. So let me ask you a quick question. If I could show you how we could improve your coverage while keeping your spend the same or save you money while keeping your coverage the same, wouldn't that be happy that you, wouldn't you be happy that you took a few minutes to find out how we can do that? So it's understanding that of course they don't have anything to be interested in that. You haven't even opened your mouth. 
and you're a valuable salesperson, right? You have a big impact on whether the sale is going to move forward or not. So your voice is important. So listen, Joe, you probably get these calls often, don't you? I get them too. And believe me, I don't like getting them any more than you do. But every now and then I listen because sometimes there's information out there that will benefit me. And this is that kind of call for you. So let me ask you a quick question. Again, if I can improve your coverage while saving, while keeping your spend the same or in, uh, 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 reduce your spend while keeping your coverage the same, isn't that something that you'd be happy that you, you found out about? So spark the interest. In this scenario, with, when, when someone says never requested a quote, not interested, sometimes our agents just hang up the phone and try to request a credit for it. We can't have that. That's not that's not the best practices. That's not utilizing your salesmanship to the highest extent, extent, extent. So being able to spark that interest and take a quick second to, to show them why, why they should be interested will be able to hook them a little bit better, right? Now, this, this is an alternative to that maybe a little bit more of aggressive uh, salesmanship. This is more consultative salesmanship. Hey, that's perfectly okay. I'm not calling to sell you anything today. Instead, I just want to give you a resource so the next time you do need this, you'll know who to call and check in with your options. And by the way, I usually like to add, if you don't mind me following up periodically, just to make sure that your needs are being met in the industry, I'd love to do that. And then you'll schedule a follow-up. And most of the time they're going to say yes. Someone who's not interested right now doesn't mean they're not going to be interested in the future. 40% of leads will buy eventually if you're persistent with them, right? So... Try, try a couple of these different approaches, and I'm sure you're going to get through that objection. Now, I'm busy right now, right? I completely understand, right? How about this? I can either call you back in an hour, or we could just spend a minute or two seeing if it's a good fit for you. If not, you'll never hear from me again. Doesn't that sound fair? You're, you're, you're acknowledging the fact that they're busy, but you're taking the time to quickly take a 60 seconds, right? If it's a good fit, I'll follow up with you, because they're telling you I'm busy right now, but they're not telling you I'm not interested and never call me again. They're saying I'm busy right now, which to a salesperson, that means I'm going to follow up with you at a better time, right? Instead of us having that call, why don't we just take a minute to see if that call is even necessary? Usually they're very receptive to that. And sometimes that quick minute or two turns into a 30, 40 minute quote. And sometimes you sold the policy, right? So I know all of you have had that experience. It's just a matter of pushing through and using the right verbiage to overcome, right? I'm with you. I'm with you. And let's face it, we're all too busy until we hear about something that can really benefit us. Let me tell you in a nutshell how this can help you. And if you'd like to know more, we can schedule a time that's, that's better for you. Fair enough. You need to plant a seed. That's what you're doing here. Take a minute or two. Let me just tell you real quick how this can benefit you. If you want to know more, great. If you don't, guess what? I'm going to take you off my list and we'll never bother you again. Wouldn't you like that? Right? So maybe they'll just take a minute or two just to listen to so that you, they can tell you I'm not interested and get you off the phone. But either way, it's giving you the opportunity, right? To, to get them interested. An, a, another initial objection. So the, what we've been going through guys have been initial objections, objections when you're first attempting this person, right? I already have insurance. Why should I switch? I'm not saying you should change. It might not even make sense for you to change, Joe. But what I'd like to do is take a look at what you've currently got in terms of coverage and premium, and I'll compare it to what I have available for you. And if you have the best, the best coverage at the best rates, then I'll tell you so. And if I already have the best rates for your needs and it makes more sense to you, you're going to decide what to do. I'm sure it's going to be moving forward with us, but either way, you'll win. Is that fair enough? Because here's what you're doing. It's likely that this person probably hasn't shopped what they have around. Now, if you shop them around with what you have and you tell them, hey, what you got is great, don't even consider other options, right? You're, 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 you're golden. That's going to save them opportunities from other insurance agents reaching out to them. Nope, I ran my quote through Joe Puckett. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm good, right? So it's, it's going to save them time if what they have is good. And if what they have isn't good, then that's a win, right? They can see what, that you have another offer, but what you're trying to do is reiterate that your goal is to make sure they're aware of the different options, and then you're going to put together a non-committal quote. The more quotes you're giving out lead to more sales. This is what we're doing. We're trying to overcome objections so that we can successfully deliver a quote to the client because that's your one inch closer towards selling that policy, right? Now, 
let's look at some closing objections because they're a little bit different, right? On the forefront, you have to be able to spark an interest. A lot of the initial objections are the rebuttals for those are getting through to spark that interest. But now we're going to go ahead and address some of the things that come up after you've gone through the quote, after you've done a little bit of that value selling, right? I need to talk to my spouse. I love this one. Are they available now? The, that way I can address both of your questions at the same time. That should be the inherent go to anytime someone says I need to talk to my spouse. Why? Because then you can pin it down. You're going to expedite that sales process. You're going to answer both of their questions at the same time. They can communicate. They can have a very clear understanding from the expert, right? I usually like to say, hey, listen, uh, you know, I, we, we went over a lot of information here. So instead of maybe playing telephone and having you translate, why don't I speak directly with her so that I can get the, the, the expert advice over to her, right? Because I've been doing this for a long time. I appreciate, you know, you wanting to translate that to her, but I think it would be a lot more beneficial if I could communicate it to her and then she'd get all the information. I'd be able to answer all his or her questions, depending on who the spouse is in the scenario, but always try to pin down both parties. Now, if they're saving money, let's say you, you went through this quote and you're actually finding out that the quote that you've generated for them is a better quote than what they currently have. This is a really great option. Hey, you want to talk to your spouse? Makes perfect sense. But it looks like we are saving X amount per month with the current policy that we, we quoted you on. Do you think they would have any specific concerns on that? Because I need to talk to myself. That just might be something inherent and like, yes, you know, usually they check things off and they, they talk together. But if they, if they figure out, hey, I, I mean, realistically, this is a better package. And I don't think that she would have any concerns with this. Let's go ahead and finalize right? That can kind of push them forward in their, in their thought process to say, yeah, you're, you know, you're right. I don't see any reason why, she, why he or she wouldn't want to move forward with this. So that makes sense. If they're not saving money, that's where you kind of pivot back to, I get it, right? It's a lot of information to go over. Are they available so I can explain it to them as well? I think it would be best to hear it from the horse's mouth, right? Because sometimes when I've gone over the information with, with you know, the spouse and they try to translate it, it might not be as, as clear or exactly the way that, um, you know, there, there might be some miscommunication. So I'd rather have a very clear cut communication uh, process with her. And I think it makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, you're the expert on this. Make sure that you're the one that's selling the spouse, not the spouse selling the spouse, because the spouse that you quoted, the spouse number one that you quoted is not an expert on insurance and they're not a salesperson and they're not going to be able to answer all the questions thoroughly. That's a fact, right? So, so bring that awareness and bring that confidence. Let me think about it right? You just ran through the quote. They want to think about it. Okay, great. When you say, let me think about it, what exactly do you mean? Is there a specific, specific sticking point that's holding you back from taking advantage of this package? Because I, and then I always add after this, because usually at this point in my quote, I've gone over everything that the consumer needs. You know, you wouldn't maybe, you wouldn't maybe say consumer to them. I've gone over everything that my client needs. Now, now that we've gone over all of this, do you mind just letting me know the specific sticking point holding you back? That, that way they're gonna tell you the real objection, right? They're gonna give you the exact reason why they're wanting to move forward. Maybe they need to speak with their spouse. Maybe uh, they need to check on their budget. Maybe they're, they're, you know, maybe the quote's a little bit too much, right? Okay, so aside from the quote being a little bit too high in your eyes, is there any other reason why you wouldn't be moving forward with this plan? Nope, that's it. Great. So if I'm able to solve this pricing issue, would we be doing business today if I'm able to reduce your quote, maybe cutting some options out? Awesome. Let's see what we can do. What options are most important to you, right? Now what we're doing here is we're isolating the objection. We're finding out if there's any other reason or if this is it. Now we know by pinning them down and, and saying, hey, if we're able to solve this, would we be doing business today? You're pinning them in a the corner because if you are able to go back and make these changes, to accommodate this client, there's no reason why they shouldn't be moving forward. So then your integrity on the line, their integrity is on the line. So if they go back on it, we can say, hey, listen, this is what we discussed. You said that we'd be moving forward today. What else is there? I wanna make sure that we're not wasting each other's time, right? These are, it's aggressive. You need to be aggressive. That's, that's the key here is you can't just let the consumer or the client direct the conversation and take control you are in control. You are the one that's been through this countless times and have heard these objections countless times and need to be using your rebuttals countless times because 
I hear it with my own sales reps that I train very passionately. Sometimes they're missing opportunities to use our rebuttals. We cannot miss any opportunities to use rebuttals because we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Why not try our best? Then you can go to bed at night sleeping, thinking I did my best. I overcame every objection I could have. I brought the energy. I, I'm passionate. I know that I'm helping these people. And if they didn't want to hear about it, that's their loss. But I'm going to be persistent and I'm still going to follow up with them. Right? It's a mindset. It's an attitude. You know what, Andrew? I don't have the money to start today. How long is this quote good for? Build the urgency, guys. Build the urgency. I can't guarantee the rate won't change. But I don't, and I'm not sure which carriers you guys are with. I, I know a lot of all state agents are here, but if you're farmers, if you're all state, if you're state farm, if you're independent, I think there are some different options you could do with, with down payments and, and, and payment plans. But I listen, I can't guarantee the rate won't change, but you can always put the down payment on a credit card and change that payment, plan, payment method later. That way you can lock in the rate today because the odds are guys that they do have the money to start today. Maybe they don't have in their mind the monthly payment on that card consistently for the next six, year, six months to a year, but most likely they have this initial payment method and they can go move forward with it. That way we can lock in the rate today, right? Because if not now, then when? I, and, and another option, I, I like this one too, because in certain carriers, you can do stuff like this, correct me if I'm wrong, but with Allstate, with Farmers, with State Farm, you could say, I will hold on to your information until you get paid. However, who knows what could happen between now and then? Rates in your area are changing all the time. And side note, they are, guys. This is not a, a, a fake rebuttal. The industry's flipped upside down. No matter where you are, things are constantly changing. So rates in your area are changing all the time. While I do only need your first month down payment today, I can defer your next payment out to your preferred billing date just to give you a little bit of breathing room while you wait. For, for your refund of an unused premium for their last policy, right? Now, how can I help you get covered today so you can rest easy tonight, right? So it's, it's, it's being able to work with them. Now, this second rebuttal might not be able to work for your carrier, but being able to address the fact that, listen, the rates change, be able to spark that urgency. Also, let them know what they can do in the meantime. You can put your first payment down. We can change that payment method. You can put, uh, put it on this card or however you guys want to do it. And then we can maybe even put you on a payment plan. So being knowledgeable about that stuff, being passionate about it, and, and you know, letting them know what their options are are key, right? This one's great too. And, and I mean, a lot of shoppers do this, right? I'd like to get some additional quotes from other agencies before I make a decision. I always like to do this. I like to ask, hey, let me ask, let me ask. Quick question. Would it be a better use of time just to get this finalized today? If you find something later that better suits your needs, you can always call me back and we can close your file, but I'm confident that we have the best fit for your needs today. It looks like I have a little uh, uh, grammar error there, but I'm confident that I can have the best fit for your needs today. Let's get this finalized today. If you find something later that better suits your needs, we can, you can call me back, we can close out your file. I know we don't, excuse me, we don't like to do stuff like that, but it moves it forward, right? We want to be, we want to allow them to feel comfortable taking that next step. A lot of the time they're not finding anything better and they're not calling back to revoke it. They're going through and finalizing that policy and taking those next steps. You want to make them feel comfortable, right? But let them know that we can still go back if you do find something better. I'm not sure if you guys can do that with your carrier, but sometimes you can. It's a great way to overcome that objection. Also, this is necessary. If someone wants to go look for more quotes, it means that you didn't fulfill all their needs. That's the basic uh, idea here. So ask them, if you don't mind me asking, what part of your needs have we not already taken care of with this quote? Now it's the, it's the same thing where we're gonna be able to pin down that specific objection because we don't technically know what's holding them back from moving forward if they say, I wanna get some additional quotes. So now we're gonna, isolate, again, isolate the objection and go to bat on it. Use that same previous uh, uh, rebuttal where, hey, listen, if I'm able to solve this because you told me that this part of your needs hasn't been taken care of with my quote, if I can solve that, are we moving forward today, right? We need to be isolating and identifying these pain points because then we, if we don't, we're not getting the ammunition we need to actually hit their pain point and close the deal, right? Your quote's too high. <laughs> I'm sure we have a lot of captive agents on the call where, you know, captive agents, uh, uh, those, those, those carriers aren't going to be the cheapest in the industry for good reason, 
right? Because there's a lot of value to it. Whenever someone says your quote's too high, we always have to look at compared to what. Very rarely in economics is there a higher price point without higher value. It just doesn't really make too much economic sense. So that way we can look at the comparison. We can look at the competing quote, and reveal the differences for this consumer and, and then pinpoint, hey, what's important to you? What's more important to you? D when disaster happens and you're covered or getting a cheaper rate on the forefront? Should be obvious, right? Another great way to say, a great way to overcome this is, listen, I don't typically compete on price. Someone's always going to be cheaper in the short term. Certain companies will give you a low price and nothing else, John. Wow, I understand that cost is a factor. It cannot be the only reason you choose an insurance policy. Trust me, I manage so many policies and so many consumers, and I see disasters happen all the time and their coverage coming into play and saving them. So I want to ask you, what are the other things that you look at besides a, a cheap price when looking at an insurance company? Odds are they're going to talk about coverage. They're going to talk about when disaster strikes. They're going to talk about that stuff. That's when you can hit on it home, right? I completely understand your concern with the rate. Listen, just remember, you're always going to get the service you pay for. I personally would rather pay a little bit more knowing that I'm going to be covered if I need it, rather than save money and not have the coverage in place when disaster happens. We'll take care of you, your home, and your vehicles as if they were our own. This is a similar way to say that second line or that second rebuttal on the last slide, but it's a great way to say it because, listen, you're going to get what you pay for. And when you pay a little bit more, you're going to feel comfortable and you're going to know that your coverage is in place. Trust me, I want to act as an extension of your household, right? We, we at Allstate, we have farmers, we at State Farm. We're not growing every single year and successful because we offer a cheap product. It's because we offer the best value at the lowest price. And that's why we're growing every year. And that's what I want to show you. And as soon as you come on board with us and start experiencing the service and, and how we treat you, you're going to be happy, right? Conviction, confidence, energy, using your rebuttals, overcoming these objections, even if it's five o'clock, it's the end of the day, it's your last call, right? I cannot express that this is what we see as the difference between the weak and the strong producers. It really is. It's about persistence. It's about diligence, right? It's about not taking no for an answer, not being sold by the consumer, guys. Don't let them sell you. All right, let's switch gears real quick because not only are we giving $100 in lead credit to every one of these attendees on this webinar, but we're offering an extremely discounted rate with some, some pretty great filters here. So no matter what state you're in, you could be in California, you could be in New York, we're gonna honor and offer these pricings to you. There's no contract, there's no long-term agreement. We start with $1,000, each lead gets deducted from that $1,000 balance. So you know if you're purchasing the $5 option, you're gonna get about 200 leads based on you converting and maybe you're closing four or five out of 200, <laughs> pretty, pretty low conversion rate. That still makes sense on a cost per item, right? When we're spending a thousand bucks, we're getting four or five policies. It's about $250 or less as a cost per item. That's very conservative, but that's what we're trying to do here. Let's get you guys an extremely low cost per lead, manage your investment. We're gonna assign you with an account manager to monitor you and make sure that you're happy and that you're seeing the results that you need to see to stick with us. Cause again, we don't have a contract and based on your cost per item, you're gonna keep going with us. And we're gonna lock in this, this special Craig Wiggins discount for you guys for the lifetime of your account here with us with Smart Financial. Um, I have my colleague, Matthew Dugan, he's up on the screen here. I would, I would advise taking a screenshot of this slide guys. Matt has onboarded probably about 500 account man, uh, 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 all state agents in his accounts in his time here with Smart fi Financial. So he's an expert, please go ahead and reach out to him. Uh, the minimum leads we're looking for on a daily basis for this special pricing discount is 10 per day. That's it, only a minimum of 10 per day. We also offer live transfer calls, guys. So here's just a quick layout of our call transfers. Um, this is, it does work on a bidding structure because agents have a very high demand for these calls. But you know, no matter where you are, if you're around that $50 price point for the no majors, current insurance for six months plus, six to 12 months, um, then you're gonna be just fine at that $50 price point, getting at least a few calls per day. Um, so that, that's uh, the, the content that I have for you guys today. Now I'm gonna open it up some Q&A. looks like we 
got a couple here. If we have Craig Wiggins and you Smart Financial, you are, Elisa, able to use that discount and you are eligible for that $100 in lead credit as well. So communicate with your account manager and they will uh, respond back and we'll get you that discount. All right. Very, very good stuff, my man. And if you're totally okay with it, uh, I am going to ask you to stop sharing your screen to make our sure. faces bigger. That way it looks a little bit better for the recording and everything. What's up, Matthew? Good Got Matt you, here man. with us. Yeah, Matt. How are doing, gentlemen? Good to be here. I am good. So glad that you were able to join us. Dude, we had tons of people, tons of people asking, can we have these slides? My answer to everybody was, yeah. It'll be on the recording. They're on the recordings. Our, th th this I'll, is I'll also shoot you Facebook. an email with a PDF, Thank Joseph. You. No problem. Thank you. So everybody on this call, don't email them asking for the scripts. I'll send <laughs> out the recording to everybody that registered for the call, and I'll send uh, the attachment of the scripts because it was so good. Somebody said, he's going too fast. I was like, keep up. Oh, keep up. I'm sorry. As many notes as you can, man. <laughs> but no, you wanted to cover as much stuff as possible. I did want to show something real quick, y'all. For those of you that are members of CWC, uh, you know that we have our powerful scripts on how to work internet leads, live transfers, direct mail, so much more, how to build rapport with the customer while you're gathering information, how to sell higher coverages so that if we are higher in price, we're worth the price, how to exactly. assume the close, how to overcome objections. We got all these scripts that we teach and more at Craig Wiggins Coaching. So I just wanted to give another final plug to that. But man, you guys work with a lot of agencies. Matthew, you onboard a lot of agencies. Andrew just gave us a lot of great tips on how to overcome objections. What are some tips and advice that you would give to team members, maybe watching this recording or the agents on the call, agency owners on the call to really have as much success as possible with leads? What are some of those few key tips? I think the biggest one is the amount of touches, which, you know, Andrew hit on today. I think traditionally, um, I, I think it's one to two touches usually is the amount of times that people are reaching out. And, and if you're not at 20 or 30 touches over the course of two to three weeks, we're not even in the ball game of seeing the return on an investment that we could be hitting. It's those mega agencies who are calling 30 to 50 times, you know, over the course of, you know, a month to six months, you know, they're putting in the amount of work that it takes for internet leads to succeed. So really it's just the amount of touches. And like Andrew said, you know, the, the conviction, the drive and the passion that it takes, you know, when you get on the phone to convert. So we have a, a saying at Craig Wiggins Coaching, persistence pays. Mm -hmm. Persistence pays. Sometimes team members don't want to be too pushy. They don't want to like bother anybody. What would you tell to that team member or even agency owner out there, you know, who doesn't want to be too pushy? What would you say to that, Matthew? I, I just tell them that you're not, you're not even touching the, the surface of the potential that you could. You know, at the end of the day, I think that, you know, everybody, everybody wants to be the best and do the best that they can, and, but nobody wants to be quote unquote annoying. Sometimes it, it takes that annoying person. The amount of times I hear on a daily basis with agents, man, you've been a thorn in my butt for the last couple of months, but it's that persistence. It's that drive. It's that follow-up method. That's going to put you at the next level. If I could uh, add I on to that, so Matt. True. Yes. Great. So I usually say that feeling that feeling that you're going to bother the client or that you're, you're, you're being too persistent, that feeling is going to hold you back from being successful because your competitors do not feel that way. Your competitors feel the way that I have something that this person needs and I know that I'm a value of them. For, to them. And that's why I'm being so diligent. So don't let those feelings of bombardment or persistence hold you back because I'll tell you, the successful agents do not have that mindset. <laughs> and, you know, I work with about 60 agencies personally. I basically live on Zoom, guys, six, seven, sometimes eight <laughs> hours a day. I work with about 60 agencies. I was looking at an agency yesterday and their lead management system because they were complaining that they weren't closing a lot of their internet leads. They buy about 15 leads a day amongst two producers. That's not too much. I don't think that's too much of a volume. I pulled it up, man. They were calling them like two and three times. Like I looked at mm -hmm. some leads they bought a couple weeks ago that had two actions. I said, gentlemen, we just found the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two phone calls isn't going to cut it. 
what would you guys recommend in terms of like frequency? I, I would tell you what I recommend, but you're the experts. What would you recommend in terms of like first day, first week? Like how would you kind of map out a good follow-up plan? You know what? I, I, I didn't want to double dip because I shared that follow-up plan uh, in the last uh, Craig Wiggins webinar that yeah. we held. So I wanted to come some with some fresh content. Some of these people content. weren't on that, man. But some of these yeah. people, exactly. Some of these people weren't on it. So do you, do you mind if I just share one slide do again? It. Awesome. Do it. Okay pulling that up because we have a really great call cadence that is tried and true. We, we, we've researched this and we know that when you're calling and attempting these leads X amount of times, you are going to be able to get in touch with them. So here we go. going to share real quick. And this is, this, this is a three month cadence. So it actually extends uh, about 90 days here. So let's just share. Perfect. So guys, this is the three, 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 three method. Three, 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 three. First day of getting the lead, you got to be calling it at least three times. I personally advise calling it five times on the very first day. Double tap. If you guys aren't using the double tap method, use it as soon as you're off the phone. When you, when you see a lead come in, call that lead right away. They don't pick up, call it again right away. Most of the time, they're going to pick up on that second call. Why? It's an emergency. Why is the same number calling me twice in a row? I don't recognize that number. It works really well. After day one, you're going to call that lead twice a day for the next three days. Then for the next three weeks, once a day. For the next three months, once every three days. And by three months go by, you call this lead at least 40 to 50 times, right? Again, do not feel like you're bombarding this client because you are going to be beat by other competitors when you have that feeling. A tip I like to give too is when you're calling a lead, fresh lead, you know, you just got it. And they do pick up. Instead of saying, hey, Joe, it looks like you just requested a quote. I, you know, I'll be helping you with your auto quote. Let me you know, help you out here, whatever, however you say. It. Try using this line, which, which works very well. Hi, is this the owner of the uh, 2017 Toyota Corolla who lives on 123 Drury Lane? Because I've got your information and I'm going to prepare a quote for you, right? Builds the credibility. You're not asking them, hey, did you look for a quote? You're telling them, hey, I got your vehicle. I got your home. I'm going to be able to get you a really competitive quote. It's really hard to say no to that, right? But this cadence, this call cadence is really beneficial to get the person on the phone so you can start overcoming objections, right? Um, but but this this is what we teach on a, on a weekly basis with our smart practice training, um, which this is a, an extension of that. We actually designed content specifically for you guys today uh, based on a lot of research. So we're, we're, we're excited. We're probably going to implement it now into our, our, our weekly training, but um, I hope everyone can use that 3333 method and then give us feedback. Like, hey, I'm getting in much higher con contact with my leads now. I'm closing at a higher ratio. This is what, this is why we're doing this. This is why at, at Smart Financial, we don't have a, a contract is because you're going to produce yourself and, and give merit to the investment, right? And that's why we want to give you as many resources and support, training, guidance, account reviews, looking at the numbers, your, your, your cost per acquisition, your cost per quote, cost per item, all that stuff, and make sure it's on the right track. So we, we really put a lot of emphasis on that. I'm seeing some more questions come in. Yeah, um, I like this one, Teresa. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, should we leave a voicemail on every single call? What do you say about voicemails? I, I don't. I'll, I would suggest leaving a voicemail on that initial call, the initial voicemail, and then you're going to be sending a text and emailing pretty consistently. Our text and email cadence goes from day one to day five every single day, and then on day seven, 14, 30, and then once a month. So we usually see the voicemails as, as a waste of time. The texting and the emailing is how you're going to get the information in front of that person. Because guys, when someone texts you, you're always looking at the message. You may not respond to it, but you're always looking at it. That's not the case with voicemails. You're not always listening to your voicemails. So maybe leave a voicemail once when you're initially trying, but then text, email. That's how you're going to really get the information in front of the client if you haven't made contact. Just a quick note on texting. I got to be that guy. Y'all make sure you're doing it compliantly. However, your carrier agrees that you can text. Totally. If you have to use a separate system, like if you're with Allstate and have to use Hearsay, or if you're with a State Farm and have to use another platform, whatever you're doing texting wise, make sure you're being compliant. I saw this huge nationwide realty firm. I'm not going to use a name. They just had to pay a 
million dollar fine for TCPA violations. A big real estate firm that's nationwide. I'm not trying to scare you all, but make sure you're following your compliance. Um, I like leaving voicemails more often than not. I totally get what you're saying. Leave it at first and then sporadically. My thing about voicemails is, you know, if you guys get a call right now, you get a call right now on your, on your cell phone and they don't leave a message, are you going to call them back? I love what you're saying about emails, texts, and all that kind of stuff. Just make sure being it compliant. But y'all sure. keep in mind, some people have on their phone the silence unknown callers. Right now, right now, there's a setting mm-hmm. I could go to on my iPhone right now. Android has had it for years. Now, don't be like, we've had that for years. You Android nerds, be quiet. You got green <laughs> bubbles. I got blue bubbles. I got blue bubbles in my messages, y'all. But y'all have had it for years. Y'all, you can go in right now to your phone settings right now and say, if someone's not in my contact, I don't even want my phone to ring. And a lot of people have that activated. So that's why I lean more towards voicemails more frequently than not. But I totally get what you're saying, too. Mm-hmm. Um, what time of day? Uh, Toshiba is asking what time great question. of day is good to call. Great, great question. We usually advise, obviously, as soon as the lead comes in, even if it was 7 a.m., 6 a.m., when that lead comes in, it means that person was shopping, especially if you're purchasing a lead from Smart Financial. They're all real time. Right. Most most of your leads are most likely real time. So as soon as they come in, that's that's usually the best practice. But you might be referring to if you know you came into the office and you got a lead overnight or one of those cases. I advise no earlier than 8 a.m. that person's time. That's my that's my personal advice because we've seen complaints. People complain if it's before eight o'clock. It's like listen, I'm getting ready for work or I'm I'm still sleeping or whatever it is. So usually advise after eight o'clock. What what do you advise, Joe? Well, also, I want to I want to touch one more oh, thing sorry. on that as well, is if you find that you're working your, your lead and it doesn't answer and you're calling at the same time every single you know time that you call, that person could be at work that time. You know, it's easy to fill this out when you're at work. So make sure that you're changing up the times of dates that you're calling if you find that specific leads aren't picking up. Make sure that you're changing that every single, you know, go around. If you find that you call this person every time at nine and it's not working, maybe we change it to four or five. Great point. Yeah. And just um, another uh, quick note here for those of you asking, like, what should we say in a text? What should we say in an email? We have a lot of those resources at craigwigginscoaching.com. I just want to give another you know, quick little plug. If you guys aren't a member, you should check us out. Make sure you use my promo code. But just to show you a screenshot of our scripts again, we have voicemail scripts, voicemail scripts. And uh, here's our voicemail and also our introductory line our introductory line. And so I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys this internet lead. I'm giving Andrew a call. Andrew, this is the seventh call that I've made to you in the past three days. You finally answer the phone. Let's just role play. You're the customer. You're the prospect. Mm -hmm. I'm me. I'm Joseph at Craig Wiggins agency. Giving you a call. Seventh call. Ring me ring. Hello. Hey, Andrew, this is Joseph Puckett over here at Allstate Insurance, Craig Wiggins agency, man. So glad that I caught you. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm all right. What can I do for you? Good. Well, I'm so glad you asked. The reason I gave you a call, Andrew, I'm almost done with those insurance quotes you requested like two, three days ago. We're looking amazing, but I just need a couple pieces of info. That's why I haven't been able to send it to you yet. I need mm. to confirm some things real quick. Andrew, is this an Escalade? Is that is that a 2018 Escalade that you're driving? That's a cool <laughs> car, man. Did you buy that new? I did. You did? Perfect. So what did I say? I am almost done with those quotes you requested. Have I even started a quote? No, I'm not wasting time working on quotes. Y'all, if you buy 50 internet leads and you call them all 10 times in the first five days, that's 500 calls. You might quote 15 or 20 of them, maybe, maybe more, maybe more, but you're not going to have a hundred percent contact rate. So don't waste your time working on quotes until we get them on the telephone, but I'm almost done. We're looking good. Tell me more about that Escalade. We want to assume the quote. That's what we teach at CWC. I don't want to say something like, Andrew, are you still interested in insurance quotes or probably not? No, no, no. I'm going to assume the quote by confirming some piece of data. I've got this address. I've got this car. That's a cool car. Don't ask if they want to quote y'all. Just assume the quote. Melissa has a great question. She does service and sales. And she wants help with balance. She said, I struggle with balance. We do a lot of life transfers, but the balance of juggling service and sales, what would you say, Andrew? 
Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's, that's an ongoing challenge, right? For all agencies. And what I'll tell you has been the best solution for our agents is when they hire, it sounds like getting more staff on board so that they could focus on production. So maybe some can focus on service because when we work with agents that are purchasing traditional data leads that you got to be aggressive with, and you got to really be persistent with, usually those are, those are, uh, full-time producers. And that's usually needed when you're working with a traditional lead. Although when you're talking about live transfers, like you just mentioned, that is something that you can work around your schedule. And I think if I was to, if I was to suggest the amount of quotes that someone that might be a one-man shop or someone that doesn't have dedicated producers should be giving out on a daily basis, it should be between five to 10 quotes, right? So I would block out about half my day and I would give us hours or whoever your live transfer service is hours that you're going to dedicate to production. Because when you are split, you need to dedicate those times. If you don't, you're not going to be able to produce. So bringing on someone that could be either dedicated to production or uh, blacking out hours for you to focus on production is going to be really necessary. But I highly advise getting with some hiring services that have been known to help hire producers at a, at a good rate and, and make sure that... Um, you know, you guys can have the staff that you need to be able to produce at the level that you need, right? Because staff is really very important. Uh, Matt, do you have any two cents on that? Uh, no, I wholeheartedly agree. I think that the biggest, you know, issue that people are going to run into is if, if we don't have, you know, a proper number of staff at our agency that we might be falling behind. So you hit it right on the head. I love the idea of time blocking scheduling when you can get those leads in with your lead vendors. I think that's fantastic. But Ricardo just read my mind. Ricardo sent a chat. You can also get lots of sales from service. It's actually pretty easy to get hmm. cross sales from service. Yes, totally. Ricardo. Yes. And we teach a lot of that at Craig Wiggins Coaching. How to generate sales from service is fantastic training that we provide. We give the exact talk paths and scripts and process and, and have courses on that. But I think Ricardo's barking up the right tree. And we might have some team members watching this call, not just agency owners and managers. I wanted to say this. Y'all, if your agent is providing you leads, data leads like internet leads, live transfers, if they're doing direct mail, um, if they're investing money in leads and marketing for you, we need to have a real big focus on closing those sales as quickly as possible. But also know that some of these sales will have a tail you might close a lead weeks later, maybe months later. I know you'll close leads years later. That's what's really yep. cool. But to help <laughs> them get a higher return on investment on that lead source, we got to be closing them pretty quick. But also whatever you can do to generate high quality free leads means that they'll be able to buy you more other leads. So cross-selling from service, asking customers for referrals, developing relationships with referral partners, mortgage lenders, realtors, apartment complexes. We teach how to do all that at CWC. Leveraging your personal network, friends, family, social media connections. When you're out and about at the grocery store, I'm not telling you go hand your card to everybody, but if you have a conversation with somebody, have a card ready. You want more leads? Bring more yourself. Bring more yourself, team members, and that will have a much, much better return on investment for the paid lead. So they'll be able to provide more. You ever seen that movie, Glengarry Glen Ross? Now oh, I'm yeah. dating myself, dude. I, I, I'm, I'm 38 years old now. Glengarry <laughs> Glen Ross. Some of you young people out there are like, what's that movie? Google it, YouTube it. There's some great scenes on YouTube. Coffee's for closers. The yes. <laughs> Put the coffee Coffee's down. For closers. Yes. <laughs> you know, set of steak knives. Third place you're fired, right? <laughs> so Glengarry Glen Ross, it's all about the leads, the leads, the leads, the leads. Y'all, you want more leads? Bring more yourself. Bring more low cost to free leads and your agent will be, be able to provide more paid leads. Totally. Um, okay, Melissa just sent in a, a text or a chat here. So my plan is first two days of the week, I focus mainly on service. Then I try to focus on sales and service the last three days of the week more sales than service in those three days. So she's time blocking her days. Perfect. Um, I think that can potentially work. You know, I had an agency that I worked with in, I think they're in Ohio. He had five team members. They were all hybrids. One day a week, they focused on sales. Just one day a week, they focused on sales. I said, y'all, y'all, there's five days in the week and we do a lot more than just service. Let's do this. Let's spend two hours a day each focused on sales. Their numbers doubled. Y'all, we got to spend more time throughout the week prospecting, working our leads. So I might challenge you, Melissa, to maybe shake that up a little bit. Um, 
Michael just said, you know, how do we generate leads outside of the building? Well, that's something that we teach, Michael, um, at CWC is how to develop relationships with mortgage lenders, realtors, apartment complex managers, how to ask customers for referrals, how to leverage your personal network. We've done several social media trainings. It's awesome. Generating your own leads will allow your agency to afford more paid leads. Okay, good stuff. Um, guys, we got a couple more minutes. Are there any other questions? Let's see here. What do you think about leaving a business card behind? Always Toshiba, mm -hmm. put that business card everywhere. You know, I had a team member once. She was very entrepreneurial and, and she made flyers. She made these nice little flyers to put at her apartment complex. Hmm. But you know, Andrew, she didn't just put them at the front desk or on the billboard. Andrew, she put them on every single car in the parking lot. This was her apartment complex. So we get a call. We get a call from her apartment complex saying, what the heck is this? Like there's, there's litter all over our, our uh, parking lot. Because what do people do with flowers in their car? Toss them on the ground. She came and told me, she's like, Joseph, I, I'm in trouble with my apartment complex. I got to go clean it up. I said, let me come help you. I helped her. We talked Aww. to the apartment complex people and apologized. And they said, hey, we're all about you networking. Here's the thing. We got a, we got a uh, spring mixer coming up. We're going to do a pool pizza party. We're opening the pool for the late spring, early summer. We're going to do a pool pizza party. Would you guys like to participate? I said, yeah, no problem. We spent 150 bucks on pizzas. She wrote dozens and dozens of her neighbors, dozens of renters, autos, umbrellas. She was one of our top umbrella salesperson too, from her neighbors at the apartment complex. That's thinking outside the box. But y'all don't litter. Don't litter, okay? <laughs> There's only one earth, save the earth, save the world, and don't litter. Um, let's it's see. An awesome story. What else, y'all? Any other questions that you guys have for, for Matthew or Andrew? I think we might have answered all of them. This was great training, of course. Now, for those of you that were asking for the presentation, if you registered for this Zoom session, uh, I will email uh, the presentation out. Andrew's going to make uh, send mm -hmm. an email out to everybody. This recording is going to be on the Craig Wiggins Coaching Facebook group. It's already streaming there live, so the recording will be immediately available in like five minutes. I'll post it to our YouTube, and for our members, I'll post it to our members-only section. Um, Carlos, tips for building confidence in sales. Andrew, Matthew, any tips for building confidence in sales? Confidence is going to come with knowledge of the product. It's going to come along with some experience, right? So once, once you as, as, as a manager, as, a, as, a, as an agent owner, can help them learn that product knowledge, get the experience by maybe jumping on their calls, showing them how to close policies, that, that builds confidence in itself. Because listen, they might be, just be struggling all day trying to quote or trying to get these prospects, and they can't do it, and they think it can't be done. But when you show them that it can be done and that this is out there, that's where you're going to go into play, jump on their calls, help them out, show them, show them by example, right? That's, that's key with building confidence. But also, I really think that um, having integrity with your product, right? That, that's going to build confidence because when you can sit there and you can tell this person, listen, I know I'm going to help you. That, that goes a long way. Right. So that's confidence in the product. It's confidence in themselves. It's confidence. In, and then there's confidence in your salesmanship, which is going to have to come with some experience. Role play, role playing, playing the numbers game. The CWC has an amazing role play type of program, too. And, and all this incentive, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, resources there. So utilize that. But experience, experience, more product knowledge, listening to the successful reps. Get them partnered up with some of the top producers at your agency so they can hear that this is working, hear what works, what doesn't work, right? That's going to build the confidence of so giving them the resources, giving them product knowledge, giving them a roadmap of who's successful and this is how you got there. And then you personally helping and jumping on their calls and doing that kind of stuff. That's, what, that's how we uh, build confidence with our sales staff. And I, I hope that you have the resources to be able to do the same. But I know that CWC has amazing resources to help build confidence, grow your guys' salespeople into sales monsters. Absolutely. We actually have a specific training session that we've done a couple of times on confidence. The very first bullet, the very first bullet, we talk about building confidence. What is confidence? Confidence is the memory of winning. You know, and I call it chasing that winner's high. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When you're able to help somebody, 
you're able to write their policies, protect their family. You just feel like so good. Your heart's kind of racing and you're all excited. Maybe you're calculating in your head. I wonder how much commissions I just made, right? You feel really excited and happy. That high, that feeling, I call it chasing that winner's high. What you need to do is remember that every time you call a number and it's disconnected, every voicemail, every time somebody finally answers and says, buzz off, stop calling me, bro. You need to remember that you're chasing that, that winner's high, that memory of winning will build your confidence. But y'all, you can't just be selling on price. Y'all, I'm telling you, if you're going to be just trying to quote apples and apples, trying to sell the cheapest price, you are going to struggle. What we have to do is build value build value to make the customer want to buy the right protection. And that's what we teach at CWC and our whole sales process scorecard that we teach the whole sales process from hello to welcome to our agency family. We teach how to lead with liability, how to bundle and multi-line auto property umbrella and other lines, how to get more sales regardless of the price. Y'all the price does not matter. The rate does not matter when somebody needs their insurance. All that matters is the coverage and we really have one shot to get it right. That first initial call where we're getting it all set up for them. So anyways, I just felt like I had to mention that too. Please don't buy a bunch of leads from Andrew and Matthew from our friends at Smart Financial and just assume that's going to solve everything. If you and your team are just quoting and hoping that you're the cheapest price, you're not. Everybody watching this call is represents premier uh, agencies and premier companies, premier carriers. You're not, you know, Shaquille O'Neal's insurance company. You know, I'm talking about what's it called? The general. You're not the general. <laughs> You're not the buy here, pay here insurance company at the corner of a weird shopping mall that used to be a nice place, but now it's in a weird part of town. That's not us, y'all. We represent premier carriers and it's worth every penny if you give the best advice. Your advice is worth the price. It can't just be quote and hope that we're less. No, if you know that you're going to be more, be worth it, be worth more. And I promise you, you will start closing way more deals. I think we're good with all the questions, Andrew, any final, by the way, thank you. Thank you both for attending. Any final thoughts from you, my man? Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. Uh, I just saw a note. It looks like Lori Feldman has wrote 220 items this month from Smart Financial, which is awesome. That's good to hear. Um, but but I, I do want to say our, our focus, of course, I mean, I didn't I didn't really get to sell any value of Smart Financial. And, and that that's not our that wasn't really our goal here. But I do want to le- give a little piece and a little plug that we generate all of our own traffic when it comes to the, the, the leads that you guys are getting, it all has to pass through our own web properties from our own marketing campaigns. And we are a generator. We go and, and, and generate all of our own traffic online as opposed to buying leads from other sources. So that's, that's a key piece, but we are relentless when it comes to the account management. The service team is reaching out to you. They're the ones knocking on your door, making sure everything's okay, giving you suggestions, giving you training, guiding you in the right direction. We're plugging Craig Wiggins where we can because we know that's valuable for our clients. So all this kind of stuff, we wanna give resources. We wanna give you obviously quality leads. We wanna help you track your analytics. And the end of the day, our goal and our mission statement is to deliver a low cost per item for each agent. And we do a fantastic job at that. So please reach out to us. Matt, if you can go ahead and put your information in in the chat, just just to finalize. And uh, we will let everyone get back to producing and having a successful day. Thank you so much, Andrew, Matthew, everybody at Smart Financial. Thank you to all for watching this presentation live or the recording. If I can help you in any way, please feel free to reach out to me. It's joseph at craigwigginscoaching.com. I hope that you consider Uh, bringing Smart Financial onto your team as a great source for great high intent leads to help you and your team have a few more chances to win. Y'all understand the more you quote, the more you will strike out. The more you step up to the plate, the more you'll strike out. But if you step up to the plate more, you're going to hit more base hits. You're going to hit more home runs. All right. So let's find more opportunities for our team members uh, to quote more, to quote more. Yes, they're going to get more no's, but the more no's they get, they're going to get more yeses as well. But guys, thank you all so much. Everybody watching, thank you all so much. But y'all, we got to get back to work. It's the last day of the month. We got to finish the month strong, get ready for a huge month ahead. Thank you all so much. We're going to let y'all go. Have a great rest of the day and an awesome February to come. See you all later. Bye-bye. Thank you.